Epilogue. Anne leaned back on the blanket to catch some afternoon sun on the beach. The interview had gone extremely well. GQ and Business Weekly had done tasteful covers. The company had recovered from the scandal, and Noah had managed to get Gaines to have the position that he deserved as head of the company. It had taken a few months, but now their lives were back to normal. Michael had only one more seizure. They had his medications adjusted, and it was unlikely he would have another if everything went well. Otherwise, he was in perfect health, which made Anne very happy. Elle waddled to the blanket on the beach and carefully plunked herself onto it. She rubbed her distended stomach with a sigh. If they kick any harder, they're going to come out the wrong way. Did you find out the sex? Padgett asked. Boys. Two boys again. Elle shook her head. I can't believe I'm silly enough to have four baby boys under four. I'm going to lose my mind. Should I lend you Fen Lee? Anne asked. Don't offer what you aren't willing to give. El warned. We will all help, Paget said, slathering on sunscreen for her fair skin. Her own baby bump was tiny, even though she was three weeks ahead of El in her pregnancy. Group momming. I think it could really catch on. Did you get the nursery painted? El asked her. It's a beautiful sky blue for baby Morgan. Paget was also having a boy. Once she and Max had announced the news, Michael had handed over the key to the downtown condo. It was a three-bedroom, which was far better than Paget's single. Max and Paget had protested, but Michael had insisted in his own quiet way. Have you picked out names? We're arguing still. Elle took a sip of her iced tea. Noah has bad taste in names. Anne watched as the guy slowly took the sailboat out. Michael was trying this time more successfully, to teach Max how to sail. Noah had gone along since the water was calm today, but she doubted he would last long. He looked green the minute he'd set off on the boat. Fenley had two napping twins in the house. FedEx had a life jacket and was on the boat, since she simply wouldn't let Michael out of her sight. Life was very good. It was about to get better. Why did he insist on going on the boat? He knows better, El muttered as she watched them go out further. He's only going to be sicker than ever. He had to go. Michael asked him to, Anne said calmly. He wants to commandeer both your husbands for a small task and had to talk details. El looked at her expectantly. Why? What does he want them to do? Paget asked curiously. Anne smiled. Well, I'm figuring it has to do with shopping for a diamond ring, since he had a page torn out of the jewelry magazine in his pocket of his shorts this morning, with all sorts of them on it. Elle and Paget both sat up on the blanket, alert. Really? grinned Paget. It's about time, Elle exclaimed. I'm so happy for you. Don't tell. He doesn't know that I know. Anne couldn't contain her happiness. She grinned. We'll have to start planning, shopping, dress hunting, Paget said dreamily. When do you think you'd like to marry? Fall? Winter? Summer, Anne said firmly. Here on the beach, right in the back of the yard. It was going to be perfect. Next year? Paget nodded. That's doable. It always takes a while to find a good venue anyways. This year? Hopefully before my baby bump shows too much. Not that I'd really care anyways, Anne said casually. She saw Michael wave from the boat. She waved in return. El grabbed her in a hug. Congratulations! Paget hugged them both. Does Michael know? He found out this morning. After I stuffed that page of rings back in his pocket, Anne laughed and hugged her two sisters-in-law. I had to tell him to distract him before he figured out that I knew what he was up to. They leaned back and watched the guys chatting about baby names. Life was good. If you enjoyed Michael and Anne's story in Unspoken Words, book three of the Ramsley Brothers series, then continue the magic with Dillian and Kelly's story in Reluctant Husband, book four of the Ramsley Brothers series. Dylan Ramsley hasn't really been living. Since the death of his wife and daughter, he's just been trying to make it through the day with his two boys. Kelly Islington didn't expect to have a crush on one of the wealthy and handsome Ramsleys, but when she met Dylan, she fell for him. 
From general mishaps to her friend's interference, she's certain she hasn't made a good impression on him. When the custody of Kelly's son is threatened by a corrupt judge, Dylan steps in. While he wanted to help, he didn't count on marrying Kelly. It isn't ideal, but now that Kelly has him, can she convince her reluctant husband to be happy? Look for Book 4, Reluctant Husband, as an ebook or paperback on Amazon. Also, it is enrolled in the Kindle Unlimited program. You can also find the audiobook on YouTube for free and coming soon to Audible.